I'm Kate Walker for Triangle Modernist Houses in Asheville, North Carolina with its native son, Burt King, who left to fight a war in Europe to study architecture at North Carolina State University and then to return to become king of his own mountain home. Well, here we are in Asheville and I just can't thank you enough for putting me on your calendar for the time to do this. This is going to mean so much to the Triangle Modernist Houses archives that, that we're building. And um, so I, you're, you're the first person I've talked to at the, in the western end okay. of the state. Yeah. I've talked to a half dozen folks in the Triangle area and somebody from Fayetteville and Wilmington and Greensboro, but you are, you are my furthest flung yet. Well, but I'm that, honored. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, here in the mountains, and with your name being King, I suppose we're going to have to title this King of the Mountain. Will that work title for you? Title should be Once a King, Always a King. Okay. But once a night's enough. <laughs> you can All right. <laughs> All right, that's staying in. I'm not editing that. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> oh, Lord, I forgot word. <laughs> oh, me. So I, I read a little bit about you that I, could, that I found on our website and looked at many pictures of gorgeous, gorgeous houses that you've done. Oh, I was well, very, very impressed. And as I, I was reading your, the little short bio that we had there, it looked to me like you were about 25 years old when you got your degree in architectural engineering. Is what Probably you're... somewhere around there. And I was looking at the timeline and it made me wonder, did, were you in the service? Were yes, you in I was war? a pilot in, uh, and served in, uh, uh, in Europe. Had you already thought about being an architect back when you were in high yes. school? Tell yes. me about what, how, what got you interested in architecture. Well, I don't know. Uh, I just... Uh, I was interested in that drafting course they had mm -hmm. at uh, Asheville, at Lee Edwards at the time, high mm -hmm. school. Uh, but I don't know, I just uh, I just had, had in mind that's what I want to be. I graduated in, uh, what an architectural engineer, well I guess it was, architectural engineering, yeah. That's what it says. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. So, because you know, the, the school changed, the degrees changed now, Camp Hefner had come Camp, by that time, right? No, he was, uh, well, he came while came I was in 48. Still, uh, while I was still in school. And right? you finished the next year, I guess. Yeah, he, he changed the whole outlook on, uh, on design. And he changed the name from the School for Architecture to School of Design. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the place in, the, in your story where Kemp Hefner comes, because you're the first person I've talked to who was there and sort of straddle those two worlds. I've talked to people who were yeah. at NC State before he came and several people after he came, but nobody who was, you're the first person I've talked to who was there, I believe, when he came and what I you was. saw as the, the transition as it happened. I'd be really yeah. interested in knowing about that. Well, it was, um, it was interesting. He, he, he sort of, he wasn't anything near like the, the professors and all. Before, before he came, mm -hmm. and uh, some people liked him and some people don't, didn't. Mm -hmm. But I thought he was very interesting. Did he teach? Uh, did he do any teaching himself? Well, he was dean of the school of design. Design. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't really think so. I've never, truth. I've never heard of him no. teaching, but you know, I just, there's a lot I hadn't heard of. Then you came back and did your whole training at, at NC State, and then came right back here, is that right? You, yes. Right, right out of college, you came back okay. here yeah. and were with a firm for not very long before you had your own. Well, I had to get my license. That uh, took three years. Mm -hmm. But uh, it wasn't too long, I, and I went to work for another architect here in Asheville, Henry mm -hmm. Gaines. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when I got to the point where I figured I could handle it, I opened my own office. Well, let me ask, let me just kind of pursue some of the things that I that came up for me as I looked through 
the portfolio that we have for you on the, the website, and I'm sure it, it represents only a very small portion of all the work that you've done. Well, I didn't tell all, all the bad things. Well, okay, we, we'll skip those, or we'll talk about them off camera. But anyway, um, I saw a library and a bank, but lots of houses. So were you able to stay focused on residential work through most of your career? Well, I enjoyed houses, but uh, that wasn't my main source of income. You know? mm -hmm. I did a lot of uh, schools churches, mm -hmm. commercial work, mm -hmm. and uh, that was the main focus. But then every now and then, I'm going to see this house. I think, I don't think any of these houses that long here were there when I built this house. So you designed and built this house in 52 and you've lived, moved in in 52, moved in in 52 yeah. and you've lived here ever since. Ever since, that's right. Do you know, do you know how many houses you did over the years? No, but a, a number of houses, and uh, I, it, I don't know, it's just at the time, you know, don't, don't think too much about it, you just go from point Project A to point to B to point C and do what you need to do. Well, I think most, I mean, certainly the people that I've talked to kind of came that same route. They had a love of, of residential work and they loved houses and yeah. living spaces and you know, got started with that, learned basics, but even no matter how much they were drawn to the residential work, they found that it was the non-residential, commercial, and industrial work that that's how you make money. Well, that's right, uh, and, because your, your fee is based on a percentage of mm -hmm. the cost. And then to do a, a, a wonderful home once in a while became almost a luxury. Well, yeah, you're right. And, uh, well, it was it was interesting. It's been an interesting experience the whole time. Well, as I looked at the photographs of the houses that you've done around this area, and I'm, I don't know the dates, but I'm sure you know you were building houses certainly back as far as '52, because we know you built this yeah. one. Yeah. And the just the stylishness, the 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 contemporary flair, but but a warmth to them. And certainly taking advantage of this of the beautiful surroundings here. I mean, you've got something here in Asheville that we yeah. just can't compete with, you know, down in the Triangle. And did, I, I'm interested in how receptive people were to more contemporary design. Was it new for them? It had to be yeah, new. It was. It was new. And, and how you, you sold it to them? Well, just uh, I don't know. I just can't answer that. It was all part of the business. And we know people generally come and they've got lots of ideas and even conflicting ideas within their own wish list. Yeah. You know, they think they want both of these things and you can't have it both ways. And yet, um, people who have been successful in fostering contemporary and modernist work have somehow gotten people to open up their minds to these sort of designs. So you must have had something persuasive going on to to get the ball rolling here, or was there somebody well, already doing contemporary work here? Well, not so much particularly, but uh, uh, I did some traditional work also. Well, I'm sure. Yeah, but uh, it was, I, I, I think when they approached me uh, to design their houses, Sometimes they knew what kind of work I did, mm -hmm. and if not, I just would show them what what well, they, they would say. That's fine, you know. As I looked at the pictures, you know, the, one of the things that I could appreciate so much about the, the modern work here is, of course, in is always that trying to bring the outside in, let the inside flow out, yeah. and you know, you couldn't have a more beautiful place. To, to foster that kind of look. I mean, why would somebody want something so traditional that would just box them in with little windows when they could look out and every direction you look, see yeah. something gorgeous? Well, the, of course, the scenics from mm -hmm. this area, it, it, there's no two alike. I mean, no. you can just walk a few steps and then it looks all different. Mm -hmm. 
I haven't spent a lot of time in Asheville, but I've been here and driven around some, and even today as I was driving in. Something that struck me today as I look and as I remembered other trips here that I hadn't really thought about before is that this area doesn't seem to be so locked into a style of houses. No. And you so you'll see, you know, something Georgian and then a craftsman right next door and something um, almost cabin like just yeah. a lot of variety here. Absolutely. Which I could be a hundred percent wrong about this, but it seems to me that when you've got that much variety already at play, it has the chance of people being more open minded for something new or different or not yeah. having to match up with a neighborhood. Yeah. Well, that's true. And, uh, Did you find that as you were? Well, I was actually, I wasn't tied down to a contemporary or modern architecture mm -hmm. as such. If uh, they wanted something else, I certainly mm -hmm. that, would do that for them. As you went along, did, did you have a number of architects working for you or with yes, you? Yes, right. I had about six or eight somewhere on there. And At different times, you'd have different numbers. Did you tend to pick up people who already had experience or, or people not just well, out of out quite college? Mostly the people that worked for me came to me mm -hmm. looking for a job. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would interview them and uh, if they, I liked what they did. And I, I had some very talented people uh, working for me at different times. Mm -hmm. And m most of them went on and did their own practice too. But uh, I don't know, this, the me everything's so mechanized nowadays, but probably uh, it changes the design when you have all this stuff like I've got now. Something that keeps coming up in conversations is the whole issue of drawing, to be able to pick up a pencil and draw something instead of doing everything on computer. Well, I didn't do anything on computers. And uh, I was, by the time that the computer took hold and was king of the mountain, mm -hmm. uh, I was about ready to retire. So the people practicing architecture now are all younger than I am. Do you ever get out and have a look at their work? Oh, sure, yeah. One of the things that I appreciate in, in looking at the photographs of work that you had done is that you know it's clearly contemporary lines contemporary spaces but a warmth and a livability to them well, that's that, nice. that that's seemed good. to me um, even though they look the houses were you know, not though they were certainly different that seemed to be uh, a sort of a trademark or a theme that ran through it. Was yeah. that? I don't know, uh, because each of them, I tried to make each one of them look different. I didn't want to rubber stamp everything. And they weren't, but they, but that quality of livability and um, warmth seemed to work through all of your, well, the, at you least the ones that I saw. Thank you. I, I probably don't realize at the time what you were talking about, but I can, I can see, look back on it mm -hmm. and appreciate what you're saying. If you were to go back and sort of have a chance to start from that graduation in 1949, I believe it was. 49. What, what are either the lessons you learned or things that you would do differently if you had it to do over? I haven't given that any thought. Never given it a thought? Well, no, must, well you, things must have been really good or you wouldn't have just said, wow, that was great. Wouldn't even have to think about making any changes. It was, it was a wonderful experience and I enjoyed what I did, what I did. And it's always what I wanted to do. Well, how many people can say that? Well, that, don't know. Well, I'd, I'd say not a lot, because some people end up with an idea of something they want to do, then they go through the education and they get to do it, but then they find out it wasn't what they expected. People can have a dream and want to do something, 
and I don't think it's exactly a be careful what you wish for you might get it. That's yeah. that's too simplistic. Yeah. But but people don't always uh, know what a whole career will be about. Um, well, when you're young and you never you, you look at architecture and you, you you think this is wonderful, but have never you had to work your way into to the fact that you would be working as an architect. And uh, I don't know, it just kind of floats into place. I don't know. Did you ever, when you were in maybe high school, did you ever work in construction or anything like that? Did you ever work no. in any of the building side of things? No, there wasn't. No. Didn't. But that, but the drafting class was what the got drafting, you. Drafting class, I like that. Now, did you do other types of artwork? Are you an artist or a photographer well, or other? Well, I, I, I do a lot of, I've done a lot of photography for mm -hmm. years. And uh, I did a little painting, a little cartoon. I used to do a little cartoons. I enjoyed doing that. When you decided to retire, Was that an easy decision to make, or did you kind of want to keep going? Kind of. You kind of drift into it. I mean, you you, you think ahead, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't just say, "Okay, I'm going to retire tomorrow." The next day, mm -hmm. I had, of course, in my mind, mm -hmm. I'm going to taper off. Mm -hmm. I believe that's the best way to put it. Here we are. This is the chapel at Warren Wilson College, right. which you designed in what year? Okay, it doesn't matter. It was one of the, I've been in practice for quite some time. Mm -hmm. this. And did, were, did they give you a pretty free hand with this? They left it pretty much up to me. That's great. Yeah. And uh, I got the diagonal mm -hmm. cut uh, beams. I liked wood. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Exposed wood, and they seem to like it too. The Canuga Conference Center over there mm -hmm. uh, has a uh, says a lot of this stuff. So, did you were you able to work all this out, or did you have to work like with acoustical engineers and all that? Because no, an organ no. be becomes a, an issue in a well. This 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 wood uh -huh. reverberates better than any, anything mm. else. Okay. And with a, with, a, with the different shapes, it breaks mm -hmm. it up, and then you don't don't get a, a, a harsh sound from it. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of a, a new look, an innovative it, it, look. It was innovative it's, at the time. Yeah. It's almost like the modern flying buttress. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, it's, to me, that's that's what comes to my mind. I'm sure that's not what it is um, in engineering or architecture, but that's an image that comes to me yeah, okay. from, from history. Here's the Poston House. Oh yeah, that's right up here. Mm -hmm. So is it right Ray, here in Ray, your neighborhood? Yeah, mm -hmm. Ray, Ray Poston. A flat roofed house, one of the yeah. first in Asheville. Right. So that was something that, that people... That was what they wanted. Okay. I, mean, I wouldn't take a chance on talking something that drastic. So these know. were kind of forward-thinking people that, yes. that they had they seen something like this maybe somewhere yeah, else I, I or think, in books I, or magazines? I think so, I don't know. So it was built in 54, so that was a, yeah. an early version. Let's see what we have here. This is the Dumont House yeah, on Grovewood, right, right also the right here in the neighborhood. Yeah. And they lived in it for 45 years. So mm -hmm. here I'm seeing, you know, a lot of light. This is the kind of thing I was talking about, about the warmth mm -hmm. and the livability yeah. of yeah. spaces. Who's that? I'll have to scroll down and come back. Well, it always tells us at the end instead of the beginning. Oh, um, 361 Windsor. It was built in 57. But okay. The, the, Beautiful fireplace and gorgeous wood. I mean, this this sort of has the suggestion of some of the feel, even of the of the chapel, to yeah. use those wooden ceilings well, I liked, and wooden. I like wood very much. Beautiful yeah, and yeah. and the flow of the outside to the inside. 
through this glass wall. Yeah. Very pretty. Now this looks like a pretty setting. Yeah, let me, that's that's that's. Uh, let me come down here and read the whose it is. I have to go down and back up. Um, Horizon Hill. Horizon Hill. Yeah. Nice. Oops. Landscape design by. Don't Ogden. Yeah. Ogden. He did mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I love this look of having the kimono hanging in that. This looks like a. I had nothing job. to do with that. I know. Just well. Go ahead and it take looks credit. Like it's covering up a window there. So. Oh, it's not. <laughs> I don't think so. But this is in that same house. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you. A good looking kitchen. This oh, is a beautiful part. This yeah. is a beautiful shot right here. Yeah. And again the Charles Sattenfield was a part of the mm -hmm. And then the uh, landscape again. Yeah. By Ogden. Ogden, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just find it interesting that you know, you grew up here. There wasn't I mean this was before people were doing contemporary work, then you right. go to NC State, you get that exposure. I mean, that's that's obviously where the, your modern influence yeah, came from. That's right. And yeah. then you come back and are able to see it here, are able and and where I mean to continue to imagine new things because you weren't really living in a environment where there were a lot of other contemporary. No, builders, no. so you were just yeah. sort of imagining it, you know, one to the well, next. Well, you know, you don't think that that uh, uh, much about it at the time. I mean, each job, each project I ever had was different from the mm -hmm. rest of it. Mm -hmm. Except maybe these two-story colonial houses. Mm -hmm. They're all the same. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Lord, I don't know. But I, I love this op the open... Yeah, that's nice. Space and beautiful textures. Do you have a modern house? Uh, actually, I am renting a house right now, which is very frustrating to me because I like working on the houses that I live in. I see. And I don't want to put effort into somebody else's property. Or no. Boy, that's a pretty inlaid floor there. Oh, yeah, it sure is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's see whose that is. Hmm. More of that. Lots of good stuff there. Let's see. At 10 Crowning Way, that built in 1964. When you were having more contemporary homes built, after you had designed these, I mean, you've got a, a labor force here, people doing construction. Did it make any difference that to them or to you that trying to get them to build contemporary? Were well, there any difficulties with that? No, because um, when I designed it and I put it on paper and then handed that the plans to to somebody else to build, mm -hmm. then that, they just went by the plans and the workmen on those jobs don't really realize much difference. So you weren't doing that. anything with materials that were unusual or off. No, no. You, just a, a different. Pretty much used interpretation. The same thing like wood and yeah. This sort of thing. So there you are. So now, now you've seen yourself uh, as as viewed on the internet. Well, I didn't throw up. I guess that's, <laughs> that's a plus. No, I of course not. This, you know. You didn't either. I didn't. Well, I told you. I I already told you. That as I looked through these, I just admired. So many things in this, these, well, these interiors, just some really beautiful interiors here that, you know, built some in, well, I guess this, I the 60s, that, and that are still as appealing today. I mean, they really have not, you know, when things are really well. You know, I think at the time I felt like it was mine. I would put every effort into mm -hmm. it to make it. Uh, good for quite a while. Something that would really not be knowing, lasting, yeah. yeah. Not knowing what was going to yeah. happen, but something new, but not so trendy that people. Who would... are those three guys? I don't know, but it, good looking rascal, don't you think? Well, you think so? Well, I thought I feel jealous. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Okay. Right. Mm. Well, here's the best thing on here: that there's only one date. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, thank goodness. 
Listen, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was thinking the other day, boy, just, just <laughs> the people that I used to know, they're just about all gone. Mm. 87 years old. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. So well, that's what things look like on the internet. Well, I declare. Isn't that something?